back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today, I am joined by the amazing Lil Six, a.k.a. the Prince of Darkness. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, man. I appreciate you for having me on this platform. The Prince of Darkness oh. is in full effect. Let's get it. This is an honor for me. Our buddy Gory Bits hooked us up. Uh, you, you came with a glory, glory praise. So I'm super, super stoked to have man, you here. But that's good to hear. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the the positive word of mouth and the, the alley oop on the um the opportunity, man. I really do. Yeah. Well, b before we talk about why you're here, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, he is a hip hop horrorcore artist from Sacramento and the co owner of the label Black or the label Diamond Life Music Group. Um, mm -hmm. Now, one thing I want to know, Lil Six, is, you know, obviously being a horrorcore rapper is something that is still very, very underground. Um, how did you get involved in that, and how long have you been uh, rapping for? Um, First, uh, how did I get involved in it? Uh, it's, it's like a family tradition down there at this point, man. My family's full of musicians. I'm in the forefathers of the, uh, the, forefathers of the sickness genre. Um, I don't want to call them the forefathers of horror chord, but they're one of the beginning people that were doing it. Um, uh -huh. It's just the music of my city, the soundtrack to my life. Uh, my family, my family members, my Uncle Lynch, um, Uncle X Rated, my father Six, man, it was just horror films. Horror films to them are what um, like fighting and uh, karate films were to Wu Tang. You feel me? So my life was infused with the, the gangster rap, just music, even oldies and R&B and soulful stuff too. But it was always uh, video game stuff and uh, horror films. So that's just the shit I like because it's the shit I was raised off of. And how long right. have I been rapping? Um, I've been listening to music and playing around with flows and stuff my whole life. Um, but seriously rapping, professionally rapping and pursuing this as a career, I've been doing it for almost five years now. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. You know, growing up, uh, I'm a Detroit guy. So, you know, growing up out, around here, you know, hip hop was something that was very special to me. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I grew up more of a punk rock guy. But uh, to me, the original hip hop was the original punk rock, you know, like the original rappers. Those were the guys that really started the fuck you. Fuck, we're going to do what we fuck. We want fuck the police, anarchy. Yeah, yeah, like, that's yeah, really, yeah, yeah. What's more punk rock the, than that? The rebels, you know what I mean? the rebels, the original rebels. Exactly. And the, and the people that genuinely believed in the message that they were uh, promoting and sending. That's, I think that's why um, we were able to, you know, infuse so well together, you know, growing up, me and like a lot of the rap guys, because we knew that it was all about, you know, anti-establishment, you know, and we had yeah, a mutual yeah. respect for each other, you know, and so to see yeah. you doing horrorcore, especially with that, it's something super special to me, because I grew up, again, in Detroit, you know, Twisted, ICP, these guys that are very horrorcore in their yeah, own you way. Guys, really you guys with the shit in the, in the darkness. You guys got that <laughs> right. dark shit. You guys got the underworld as well. Yes, sir. So not only that, but like not only are you a lover of horror video games, sneakers, but just pretty much anything creative and dope. You know, you want to bring you yeah, know dope pretty music much, to life. Man, just culture, right? And the thing about that is, you know, people hear horrorcore. You know, they hear horrorcore hip hop or horrorcore rap, and they're just like, "What the fuck is this?" But when you can yeah. really tackle it into the genre, you know, it really is more like, it, like you said, with horror, it's a way of life rather than a style of music. You know, and yeah. some of the best, sweetest, kindest people I've ever met are horror fans. So um, where can people find your music? Uh, my music is on all platforms. I'm under the name Lil Six, L-I-L-S-I-C-X. Also, um, we have a website, diamondlifemusicgroup.com. We can find out more about me on there. I'm building my personal website. It's still under construction, but you can find all my stuff there. And then um, we got hard copies, physical CDs. Um, you go through me directly or the website, diamondlifemusicgroup.com. And uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff is all L-I-L-S-I-C-X. So you contact one of those links or contact me on one of those sites, and I'm going to link you to all my stuff. Um, I'm easy to find, man. You can Google me, L-I-L, um, space, S-I-C-X. Sometimes the space will have, like, different songs pop up, but if you put the space, everything will pop up. So that's pretty much it, man. I try to keep it simple. And, uh, you know, I respond to everybody, all my emails, all my DMs, all my comments. It's all love, man. The Prince of Darkness is here for the people. Well, and that's the thing. You said you want to make it easy. I'm going to make it even easier, guys, because you don't have to look anywhere for Lil Six and stuff because it's all down all in the right. description. So make Hell sure you're yeah. following him on social media. Make sure you're uh, grabbing a couple copies of what he's got, checking out what he does. I've got all the streaming platforms, all the physical releases, because I'm going to have to cop me one of them shirts. I can tell you that right now. Man. So Hell um, yeah. <laughs> I, I got to get me one of those. Those are dope. So um, 
And like I said, guys, all his information is down in the description. So make sure, like I said, following him on social media, staying up to date. Like he said, his website is still under construction. Like I said, you never know when that's going to become official, but you guys will know just by following him on social media. And it really means a lot to have the community gather with each other to try to help each other out in any way we can. So, man, Lil Six, in order for you to be, you know, a horrorcore hip hop artist and to be so much in the horror genre, horror had to start for you somewhere. So now, my friend, I would like to go back to the past and talk about what got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And, oh, man, do I love this fucking movie. Uh, Little Six, your first horror movie was? Fright Night, man. As a kid, um, my pops was always watching horror movies. And Fright Night's the, I don't know if it was the first movie I seen, but it's the first movie that stuck with me. You know, the font, um, the movie, the, 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 uh, the packaging, you know, back then, the physical stuff, all the right. covers, all that stuff, the colors, you know, um, even the audio. I went back and watched it the other day, and just the audio is just, you know, they don't make movies like this anymore. And I, right. I can definitely appreciate it, still. So. Yeah, and it's funny you say that, because I've told this story before. I was very blessed. Uh, like, you talked about how you grew up with parents that were into music and, you know, into horror. I, I, my mom and dad owned a mom and pop video store. So, you know, I had that's, videos that's in my beautiful. for it, you know, whenever I wanted. And our YouTube, when we were younger, was walking up and down the aisles, looking at the cover arts, trying to decide yeah, which sure. one stuck out to us the most. And Fright Night, man, you know, having Amy up in the clouds, one of the best movie posters of all time. So, Dope as fuck, uh, man. Yeah. do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it? Um, I know I was too young to be watching it, but I don't. Probably <laughs> about six or seven, maybe like eight or nine. What, what, what year did the movie come out? 85. I was born in 89, so right. I've probably seen the movie in probably like 94, 95 type shit, you know what I'm saying? So oh, and it still like... holds up. Um, it, it, this is a movie that, you know, I. it's a movie that means the world to me, man. You know, Evil Ed oh, right yeah. here. So, um, you know, we know that you watched it with your dad at quite a young age, but do you remember which scene it was that affected you the most? Um... That's kind of hard to say that now because I just watched it again. So um, back then, back then it was probably just the uh, the way they made it feel real. You know how the, the, the theatrics, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays we get all this um, uh, CGI, AI. I know it looks, everything's beautiful, pretty smooth and computerized. Back then, you know, we were watching something, but we were also watching um, how it's created, whether using zip lines, um, is that real blood? Uh, did they, you know, things that made shit believable and um, we knew it was fake, but it's just the overall craftsmanship, man. You know, just the craftsmanship. I, I 100% agree. Like you have the scene where Amy's dancing with Jerry Dandridge at the club. And when you're looking in the mirror, he's not there. But then you see him and he is there. Like those amazing yeah, tricks like, like that that you're then, practically done. It just looks fucking fantastic. Hell yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a movie that we've watched, you know, over and over and over again here in this household because it's it's a perfect example of a great horror comedy that really balances both, you know, the horror yeah. and the comedy aspect of both of them. So um we know, you know, the, the practicality of it's really what affected you, but what would you say your favorite scene from the film is? Um Yeah, that's tough, man. That's very tough. I liked so much of it. Watching it again, I, I, I soaked it all in again. It was like watching a brand new movie again for me because it's been so long. But I just really like um, shit. I like when they uh, when they put the titties on the screen, man. I like the dialogue. <laughs> I like like the dude. Like no disrespect to anybody, but like um, it was a different time. You were not allowed to say certain things, but you were allowed to say other shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just showing the titties in the in the sexual sensual way. Um, like the dance scene was dope. Um, what else, man? What was the question again? Let me let me let me let me formulate Just that. Your, your absolute favorite scene from the film. Fuck, that's tough, man. I can't pick a favorite scene. I, I like I like I like the whole thing, but it was literally my favorite my favorite horror film. But one that stuck out to me yesterday was uh, just the transformation. I watched the re the remastered version as well. So like the transformation of um people turning into vampires and then back to humans and shit back then like that shit was fucking amazing man that and it's funny you're, you're talking about um 
like when you have the sexiness of the film, I've always thought that vampires in general, whether it was Dracula, you know, whether you had the hammer horror, or even the universal or stuff like this, vampires were always the sexiest of the monsters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? They always, they always got women. Yes, you know, they preyed man. on everybody, but they always, they always had that, uh, that charisma and the, uh, yes. the bad boy, the dark side to them. So they got the bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry Dandridge, that's what he was. You know, he was just the sexy head vampire that all the women loved and you know, he was able to manipulate them you know but even yeah. like when you see when he takes ed you know and he's like i know that you're hurting ed i can make it so you don't hurt no more and then they're in the alley and then ed just ends up giving himself to him like even then you know yeah he yeah he's damn near like, like, like that uh, he's damn near like uh, allowing them to submit to him damn near beside you know versus like taking them or hunting them he's just scaring them and Come into the darkness, step into the dark side with me. You know what I'm saying? That shit's right. dope. That shit's dope. Love it, man. The mental aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, Fright Night did get the remake treatment. Um, we did get a Fright Night remake. Um, did you watch What's the Fright the Night remake? No. <laughs> Have what you is seen it? Called? No. It's not Fright all. Night. No, I, I that's when I watched it yesterday. There were some different dates, like release dates, and I was like, no, nah, that's not it. I, I've never, I've never seen it though. I didn't know, I didn't know that was like even a real thing. Yep, uh, Colin Farrell plays Jerry Dandridge in it. Okay. Um, the kid that played McLovin plays Evil Ed. Um, okay. Anton, uh, the, I can't remember the kid's name. He passed away, but he plays the lead role in it. It's you know, I, me and Ashley, we did a we do a segment called Versus where we look at original and a remake, and yeah, that yeah, was a yeah. book that we really, really had a lot of fun with, even on the remake. Um, I got Chris Sarandon has soon, a cameo man. in it, which is hilarious. Um, you know, like to see him come back, not as Jerry Dandridge, but just as a small cameo, I thought was really good. So That's if you get the chance, I would strongly recommend checking out the Fright Night remake. It's definitely, it's, in my opinion, it's not as good as the OG, but it is a fun ride. You'll still have a really good time with it. Hell yeah, I will check it out, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously with Hollywood right now, with the remakes, requels, sequels, all that, um, would you like to see a continuation of the story? Because Tom Holland has said, he would like to make a Fright Night Part 3 and continue on from the characters from Part 1. Is that something you'd like to see today, like a continuation, like a requel, like they just did with Halloween 2018 and like they're doing with The Exorcist? Or would you kind of just like to see a sleeping dog lie on this one? I love original stuff, so like, you know, I haven't even seen the first remake. So if they do do it, as long as they do it properly, I think it'd be dope. Like, um, this is not a horror film, but like Ninja Turtles, we all had the OG yeah. when we grew up as kids. And I just watched the uh, the new animated one again yesterday. Well, not again, but for the first time yesterday. And it's slightly different. They changed the demographics a little bit. They changed characters, uh, races and stuff. Some night, but it was a beautiful movie. It was great. And I, I feel like if they do it right and they, and they write it correctly and the actors are good and not cheesy, you know, um, why not? Right. Why not? I'll tell you this. Just do it right. I, I can't tell you how many times in my life I just did the ninja rap. You know, like out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Legendary, ice. legendary shit. You know, legendary like, shit, man. <laughs> um, so, so we talked about your like, first. No, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, as long as the sequels and the remakes and the stuff that they're attempting, as long as this has the effort in there, they're not, not just doing a money grab. You know, fuck it, let's rock. Yeah. Right. Well, little six. We talked about you know your first tour movie being Fright Night and what that movie means to you. But now here for a second, my little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. Okay. What's your favorite scary movie, little six? <laughs> what is your favorite? <laughs> horror movie of all time favorite of all time um man fright night's my the one i can remember first and fright night's literally my favorite but other ones that i like um i don't know if this one counts species when it first came out i don't know if that's like sci-fi horror yeah. um the devil's advocate that's the reason my last yeah. album was called the devil's advocate um what else i can't remember some of the titles because most of my shit that i really really like I watched them as a child, you know? Right. So I can't remember all the titles, but just zombie shit, vampire shit, all that shit, man. Yeah. But uh, Devil's it's, Advocate, it's, Species, it's... Fright Night. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hell of a – that's the holy trifecta right there. I could have a you know little watch along of all three of those, man. And I'll probably, I'll probably think of some other ones later, man, like um, – what they had tales from the hood i used to like that uh leprechauns oh, the first couple of leprechauns were fucking dope as fuck to me the other ones got cheesy and stupid but i still watch them because i love leprechaun you know what i'm saying so right. i'm just i'm just a fan of the genre in general 
Um, I even like watching the foreign movies, the foreign horror movies, uh, the Asian uh, foreign horror movies with like ghost stories and this, the way they film their shit and tell their stories is, is so much different. I appreciate that shit too. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you're talking about Tales from the Hood. I still say the ending of that movie is the scariest thing I've ever seen ever. That shit Taylor was scary, movie. bro. That Dude, shit like, was scary. This, I mean, he's no funeral home. I was like, I'm done. I'm out. It's just scary. Yeah, that dude, <laughs> that dude's definitely spooky. Definitely. He, he definitely yeah. creep, creep people out. Like so, man, I've had an amazing time hanging out with you, talking about these things. And uh, before I let you go, we always bounce back to the same question. We're going to bounce back to Fright Night. And what we're going to do here is we're going to rank this movie on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking it on acting, production, score, direction, nothing like that. All we're doing here is ranking Fright Night on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, what would your ranking of Fright Night be? Man, I'm super biased, bro. Um <laughs> I am like the shit that I like. I, I I can't find a weak spot for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't find a, yeah. I can't find something I don't like about it. Um, mm-hmm. But just the first impression, you know, it was there was nothing in there like too crazy and shocking and like you know made me have nightmares at night. It was just a dope, funny, um, well told story. So I give I give it a I give four skulls. Four skulls. That, that's a perfect rating and. Uh... You know, it says one of the most iconic lines of all time. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> like, that's a line. Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. Yeah. I all use the, all, all the, the little time. lines and the punch lines and shit. It made me. It made me. It didn't scare me because we're older now, right? But it made me smile. Right. It it brings back the nostalgic, the nostalgia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, I mean, it, that it, line it, right there dope. is that clip is in every single live episode that Ashley and I do, you know, it's in the intro of our live episode because that's how much that scene means to us. So that's crazy um, that we, we have the same mutual feelings for that specific movie. Then that's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's, it's funny how the world works, man. So yeah. I know we said it at the beginning guys, but we are at the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll and the curtains about to drop. But before that happens, all of little six of social media links, are down in the description so make sure you're following make sure you're checking out his records i promise you you're not going to regret it so um little six please don't go anywhere i got a couple more questions for you um everybody else if you haven't already please like and subscribe it really does help the channel more than you know and follow sledgehammer horror on social media all our links are in the description as well but until next time keep talking horror stay what you are and we'll see you guys soon